I call the Right Honourable Winston Peters. Mr Speaker, there is a sort of Damocles which hangs over the Prime Minister and the head of this government. They seem to have learnt nothing, whether it was back when the Murray Loans Affair, the BNZ, the wine box, the Tea Party tapes. They sit there and scream out, where's your evidence? When it's all over, they are the ones who have been severely damaged by their behaviour. And it will put you in mind of Walter Scott's famous quote when he said, Oh, what a tangled web we weave when we first practice to deceive. It had all the marks of a who done it. And if done had not done it, who had? Oh, how things have changed. Back just before the time he ordered the inquiry, Mr. Key was the anti politician, the fellow who could be trusted because he didn't behave like the rest of us. He had standards that were high, he said. He was someone above the ruck of politics. And then, of course, he thought that matters like this, proven when he sent the police in after the teapot tapes, were things that were justified from a government and from the Prime Minister of a country. Remember that? That was two months ago. Oh, back then, he was going to make sure that no one undermined the integrity of the entire public service. How laudable was that? And he was going to get to the proverbial, proverbial bottom of it. Now he's condemned by his own words. Now he can parachute out of the bottom of a snake and still have some room. It looks like John Key never had any intention to find out what really happened. There was no public servant, alas, to carry the can like they did over Nova Pay. Three ministers responsible? Oh no, they found a civil servant. And the meat shipments left on the wharf in China. Any minister being called to count? No. The finger of suspicion came on Mr. Dunn. And the Prime Minister had a dual responsibility over this matter. He's the minister responsible for security. He is the minister, above all ministers, responsible for the actions of those that are his ministers. The leak of the Kidders report was not an isolated incident. That demonstrates how incompetent this Prime Minister and how irresponsible his behaviour is. This was not an isolated incident. There was a leak about morale at the GCSB. There was a leak about the new head of the GCSB. There was a leak, there were leaks about the briefing on the GCSB. There was a leak about the security of the Intelligence and Security Committee itself. And there were other leaks. The Secretary of the Committee warned the members in writing to shut up. All five members were now under suspicion. But one was responsible. There are five sets of electronic records, Mr Key, and we want to see the complete package. There are five sets of electronic records, and it is the responsibility, Mr Banks, of your Prime Minister to show the country what they mean. There are over five leaks with one department, the GCSB alone. And Mr Banks has the temerity shout out to a backbench MP, you table them. Well, I can see why someone who'd forget four, 42 out of 42 checks would say that. <laughs> but not a rational sane person would say that. That the responsibility lay with a backbench MP. No, Prime Minister, the reason why you have that CBP Prime Minister's job is because with the job and the status in the office goes a terrible thing called responsibility transparency, openness and honesty. You know, national security, Mr Speaker, is the first duty of any and every MP. What are our allies thinking? The member broke the terms of his warrant when he was a minister. He leaked security matters to a journalist. This was no stand over matters of principle. This was no stand to make the world a better and safer place, or New Zealand a better and safer place. Maybe years of looking at the tax tables made him flip. Maybe they caused him to want to get some excitement into his life. But whatever it is, it may be a human explanation, but it's not what the nation needs to know. What was leaked, to whom and when? 
and it was far wider than the Kedris report was looking into. He has given life, though, simply because National needs his vote to sell off our assets, and he let the Shonky Casino deal go ahead. And Muddy River Power. No, no, Mr. Banks, I have seen that nervous laugh, and it gives me enormous confidence that one day I'll wipe it off your face. Right? <laughs> you know, yesterday, yesterday, Prime News, Prime News at 5.30 carried Fairfax outing Mr. Dunn with information I knew at the time I said in the select committee, Mr. Dunn, you're the leak, aren't you? Oh, great question. My job is to be good at my job. My job, my job and my colleague's job, everybody that, everybody that votes for New Zealand First knows one thing profoundly. We will keep the system honest. That's why they're coming out in their droves. Because New Zealand First keeps the system honest. And this is just one more example. I know, members would love to know, members would love to know, how do we know? Well, you know, I suppose we'd all like to know that. But we can't divulge a source that didn't behave illegally. That's the difference over here. That's the difference over here. Why did David Henry stop investigating the leak of the Curtis report? It's all on page two of his report. I've got the powers on the State Service Commission, he says. I've got the support of the Prime Minister. I've got a minister out of Cabinet who's not a civil servant. I remain of the view that I need to have full access to all 86 emails. All there. What is the National Party's devious and bound to, feign, uh, bound to fail excuse? Oh, all of a sudden, we can't entertain any breach of privacy issues. Mr Banks and Mr Brownlee, where in the report from Mr Henry has he disclosed the 44 emails already seen by him, highly edited as they are. There is no privacy issue. And I personally am not concerned about the emails from Angela, Andrea Barnes. I'm concerned about the far more than 86 that were on this issue and others as well. Some members here should learn how to do their research and homework. And perhaps if they knew a few people around town, they might find out what's going on downtown. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, let's demolish the argument that there's a privacy issue. Mr. Henry has not given over the 44 emails. There goes the excuse. Why did Mr. Henry not get the powers to see all the emails and ensure a thorough and complete investigation? The Prime Minister asked today, when you set up the inquiry, did you want to get at the full truth? Yes, he said. Really? Well, he's exposed by his own words and shibboleths and deceit. Why, for example, is this reeking of double deals? Had it been a civil servant, it would be not just demotion, not just demotion, it would be demotion and then dismissal instantly. But, oh, here we got Mr Dunn, he stays on. The whole affair is smelling like a giant cover-up. He goes on to tell the media yesterday at a press conference Mr. Dunn is being removed because he's no longer a minister. Here's the Act. There's the Section 7 of the Intelligence Security Committee Act 996, and it says, Mr. Prime Minister, after 24 hours, you still can't tell the truth. And the media might fall for it, but we didn't. He is entitled to be as an MP on that committee. So why did you get up in front of the press and say that when you knew you had to be not telling what was the fact? Every day, there's more obfuscation and evasion. And let me tell you this, Mr Speaker, this is not a case of whether New Zealand First or an MP in New Zealand First should do the Prime Minister's job, but we are going to carry on until this cover-up is totally exposed for what it is. It has one valuable asset for New Zealand. Apart from correcting our national security, you know what it is? People are going to find over the ensuing days and weeks exactly what the Prime Minister of their country, alas, is like. Yeah. I call the 
Honourable Minister Jerry Brownlee. Mr. Speaker.